Greetings, people from the Great Start Studio, where all my dreams are coming true. It's true, I built this whole building so I can produce all of my work. I'm glad to have you here sharing it with me. Drumstick illustrations. Every time I'm teaching, I have a drumstick with me and I explain everything in a drumstick. Today, I want to talk to you about the concept of otherwise and nuanced. I always say if I could design the Department of Education, I would start every kid talking about the word nuanced. That would be one of my early words in grade school, nuance. Nobody talks about it, but it basically is details, the detailing of something. To think otherwise is to take something that already exists and to somehow think very differently. I love the quote that says, genius is to think otherwise. And it got me thinking, otherwise, what an interesting phrase to use, otherwise. Whenever we're practicing something or we're playing something, or a song is a certain way, we just kind of accept that as that's all there is. And then we nuance that groove. We nuance those fills. We can kind of change percentages by degrees, but we don't really think otherwise. I like to put it this way. To think otherwise is the difference between thinking red and blue, as opposed to blue, light blue, and 50 shades of light blue. I talk to the students all the time about those 50 shades of light blue. I go, that's like the 13th shade and the 14th shade, kind of the 11th shade of light blue. It's very hard to keep them separate. It's a totally different discipline to think nuanced. It is really important. I have uh, videos talking about the small details and the large things. You're gonna to wanna to go back and check some of those videos out because they, they've got lots of information there. You want to be able to take any type of groove and find 50 shades that are so slightly moving that the song is breathing, even if the audience doesn't really even realize it's breathing. It's breathing in this slight, detailed sort of way. I think of uh, players like, like Dave Garibaldi, uh, Dave Weckl does this, where they have notes that just kind of keep crafting within the feel. It could be a song go, but these crafting notes that keep changing it. The difference over here is to think otherwise is actually a different kind of discipline. It's very hard to do. It's the kind of discipline where you have to actually jump out of the system to think of something completely different. Dean Castronovo would do this. He played on a bunch of shrapnel records. This was a label back in the mid 80s, late 80s. They, they had a bunch of the early shredding guys, McAlpine, a bunch of the shredding guitar player, instrumental rock, and they would hire Dean and Dean would come in and, and, and knock out, you know, half an album and split it with somebody else, or he would do the whole album. Well, he would be playing a feel that everybody else would feel a very particular way, and then he would kind of leap out of it and play a phrase against it. You would go, how did he think of that? Dude, where are you, where, where are you drawing from to pull this idea? The, but every genre has this. It doesn't matter if it's Latin jazz, you know, folk country, you know, uh, Cajun. It doesn't matter. Every one of these has this where there's a certain system of history, of tradition. And what happens is, is that a player comes into that and instead of nuancing the 50 ways, right? or just playing it down in the traditional way and not even nuancing, it, they'll jump and they will draw from somewhere completely outside and draw something in that you would not have thought would have been so beautifully placed in there. Once again, it's one spectrum. It is really one spectrum. On one end, you are completely reaching always for a different idea. A lot of prog music does this, especially the early prog when we're talking about early 70s. They would just like, cram one idea right next to another different idea, right next to another different idea. It's like a cut and paste, and they would just grab this and put this here, and it was like you never knew where the song was gonna go. The nuance wasn't really there. They were just grabbing at radically different colors, red, blue, green, <laughs> yellow, and they were just putting them in one song. You're like, wow, this song is trippy, right? But then what happened is, is a lot of that stuff became even more nuanced. So it became red to purple to blue. And so there was some sort of, you know, softening of the arc that started to move across the spectrum, right? And become more nuanced. And so there are things that are just like what we call brick wall changes. You know, just all of a sudden, just like I said, you just cut and paste and you drop it in. Those kinds of ideas. When you're playing the drums and you're playing something, and it could be a style, it could be a meter, it could be a feel, and you just 
all of a sudden have this idea that, wow, this actually works right next to this other thing. Now, what you have to do in order to have that kind of draw, to be able to draw from that kind of experience that you've had, you have to create the experience. You can't draw from something you haven't experienced. So what you have to do is if you were trying to draw something new into metal or something new into bluegrass or whatever it is, you have to draw from somewhere outside of that traditional pool to be able to think otherwise. In the Renaissance wheel of learning, you basically have all of the different increments of styles, meters, subdivisions. And once you pass through those, you start seeing connections that you wouldn't normally see. You, you start seeing it through a quarter note connection or through the and or through the that the snare has moved up to the uh. And you go, wow, the snare has moved up to the uh in this 5-8 in the same way that it's moved up to the uh here. And they would actually be like red to purple. It wouldn't be that crazy as you would think. You have to think otherwise by having the experience of the depth of practice, the depth of experiencing all sorts of times. I went through this phase where once I started getting hired by bands, I just actually would just order all of this music at random. I would just order their whole CD. I, out of every section, it was all in different styles. I'd order them out of blues, I'd order them out of Latin, I'd put a bunch of things in Spanish, I'd order things, like in every kind of thing. I would just grab those, practice them through every single song that was foreign to me, either by that I hadn't grown up with it, or just foreign to my hands. It just kind of didn't know quite exactly how to land on this. This was my music, pre-recorded music practice. Five, 6,000 songs or something. And these individual songs went through all these different fields. They went through all the different traditional types. They could have been like an old Elvis tune that I'd never heard. I also had like a 5% or so of those were just feels that felt so good that everything magically just came together and I went, I need to be in this environment so that I am in something that just for whatever reason is so appealing, the music and the drums all come together, the tempo, and you just want to be a part of that and make sure that that is part of your standard. That's part of this wheel. Well, when you are over here, wherever you're playing, let's say I'm playing with uh, this uh, horn band I get hired for and I'm playing with it and he likes to play all the songs uh, in the 70s sort of way, not in the newer way, where the drums play straight through, the drums are playing straight through, no fills, no, no, I don't move with the, the horn line. I wouldn't move there, I would just go debt and debt and debt and debt right through that. That setting is so controlled that I would not think otherwise in it. It would be out of place for me to reach otherwise because I'm being hired to play something that's completely controlled. I would be over here in the nuance. The nuance part is where I take those feels. How can I make this feel between the bass and the snare that has to be constant? How do I make this song breathe without changing that? No fills, no changing it. And you start going through kind of your ornamentation things that we do in the series, where you walk down all of your different ornaments and those things manipulate the feel in such a nuanced sort of way that the bass player doesn't have to change, the dancers aren't changing, the band is still moving the same way, everybody feels it the same way. But those nuances, the ghost notes, the accents, the placement, my left foot tambourine, all of it adds in. So I don't have to change that feel to otherwise, I am still grooving within that same exact feel. This is like a huge, huge thing in the spectrum. You have to learn how to, you, you gotta learn how to have all these variations of something without hardly changing that beat at all. We tend to like make these jerky movements. And so you want to be really comfortable with these details. It's almost like it's not even moving. It's slowly morphing into the chorus. It's slowly morphing back to the verse. It's morphing into this break. The whole song, it's the nature of that song. There are other songs that have a different nature. They are reaching. You have songs that are made to be otherwise. You, the audience is there because they want to hear otherwise. The band is designed around otherwise. And so it is the charm of the unexpected that seems to work even though you wouldn't have thought that that would go there. These, these things are <laughs> whew, they're so important to me because this is all part of the spectrum I try to teach the kids. And once you get this idea that otherwise is over here, thinking otherwise, and the other end of the spectrum is nuanced with the 50 shades of light blue, which I talk about all the time. Then you create this world. It doesn't matter where the song is. 
Sometimes a song that you learn over here with a certain artist, you'll play with a different artist and they want it over here. They do not want it to change. And then you're with other people who are much more adventurous. They like splicing songs together and changing the feel within the song. You're playing a song in 16th notes and then all of a sudden it switches into this kind of triplet reggae feel and then they want to come back. And if you don't have the experience of the wheel to be able to draw over there and draw back, you're just going to be lost in that environment. They're not going to hire you. They're not going to have you back. And they're going to go, this was a train wreck trying to do this. This is not our guy. But if you have the whole spectrum, then you can jump in in any one of these places and be comfortable, contribute to the music as it's supposed to be, instead of just living in one sliver of the spectrum. You cannot create nuance until you get down into details and go, what is the slightest move I can make? And you just take a groove and you go, what are 10 super slight moves that I can make that create a pulse in this that makes it breathe and grow. Anyway, I love making these things. So if any of these things are speaking to you, then you're my people. I'm on the search for my people. Please go and uh, check out the website, check out the series, push a like, comment. I have the last four things I've had. I've had four negative things. So I must be reaching people. <laughs> I must be reaching people with my weirdness. I'm locked in a cave. I like some mad scientist here. So let me wrap this up. I can't, there's just too much. <laughs> Oh, check this out. I have balloons for the students. So let me get out of here. So from the Great Start Studio, back at it.